build outstanding performance. Mm. Build a culture of listening. Listen first. Listen, Linda. Listen. <laughs> you know, you remember that little thing that went on so far? And a little girl saying, but, 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 she would never listen to her. And he could have been telling him, but I didn't tell her back that day. Give him a chance to listen to what he had to say. So we need to listen to our spouse. Hear them out first. Then come in there. Learn to recognize emotions in others. I said that earlier. Learn to recognize, even though we as women always say, but you know what I mean, you know what I want. No, they don't. So when they got men had their days where they have emotions of down, they gotta be able to pick up on those. We talked to a couple uh, about a month ago, and stuff was drifting because the person was not paying attention. The person was going through something. And if you with your spouse, like I said, you should be able to know and be able to see those things coming. And the person didn't realize that it was drifting and didn't pick up to on it. So you have to know, and that goes back to communication, but you know, if you don't communicate, let them know, I'm having a hard day. Today is not a good day for me, then I don't know. You know, and you've seen movies before where men lose their job, but they don't go home and tell their wives because they don't know how to tell them because they feel and afraid of what she might do and what, say, what she might say. But that's something that you also need to lay on the table as a young lady spoke to earlier. That's one of the questions. How would you deal with if I was to lose my job or if you lost your job? Would you leave or would you work it out with me? That, that's another question you need to add on the table, put on the table as well. Again, we talked about uh, praising them. That's praising both each other, not always. Men don't usually praise women. Some do, but not majority of them. We as women, we always praise our men. Oh, you look good, you smell good, but they don't do that to us. They don't, they don't know. They know, but they don't know. They smell, they see, but they don't pay attention to it. But you know, we as women, we might say, we might something look good on our stuff. Oh, you look nice. I like that shirt on you. Oh, you need to, I like that. That colon smell good. That smell good. They don't do that to us. You know, they don't. They smell it, but they don't. They don't say, well, oh, you look nice today. Or, better like when you wear that uh, dress. That's cute on you. You coordinate that good. It's just a little simple thing that you can say. You might be thinking in the back of your mind, but you don't verbally say it to your spouse. So when they look good, smell good, let them know. Vice versa. Let them know. You look good. Because if you were single, but he fine and tall as black, and I like him. But you ain't gonna tell him that once you get married, so you so fine and tall. I sure love you. <laughs> you don't say that no more. And vice versa with women. You walk up to a lady, he sure look nice, but I like your hair. But you're telling your wife that. Now, we, we, we also gotta get to this point too, us, us as women.
it's a team effort. Again, this conference is about a team. So it's not just all on one person. And when I speak of just men, I'm speaking of the women as well. We all have to do our part. Be a leader. You have to be a leader on both sides. Be the leader in your department. Be the leader in your department. Spouse leader, gonna be the wife leader. Spouse leader, gonna be the male leader, the husband leader. We all accomplish one. Everybody leading and doing their part, and everything is getting done. Everybody. Set high expectations. Gotta set goals. Gotta set goals. You have to set goals. You can't just stay here. I don't care how old you get. I do not care how old you get. You can retire. Still set some goals. I don't care if it's jump out of airplane. Mm -mm. That's a goal. Set some goals. <laughs> set some goals. You can set some real life, realistic goals. You can set some fun goals, but continue on setting goals. Even if it's safe, it's safe as you say, okay, I'll go, I'm retired now, maybe I want to uh, dress better, you know, spruce up my, my attire, you know. As you get older, you know, you slack, you know, I don't, I don't have to work no more, I have to pick myself up and I sit at home and work fine, I'm not doing that. So, set yourself some goals that you're going to accomplish as long as you're on this earth. Set some goals, don't stop, and then don't stop dreaming, do not stop. Ask questions. If, you, if you're if you not sure, ask questions. You have to ask questions with your spouse. Don't assume nothing, because we do do that. We assume a lot. We assume a lot. Don't assume nothing, because what we may assume might not be nowhere near what we think. Never. If something took place, then I assumed something, but it did not go that way. But if I would have asked, I would have found out. Exactly. So don't assume anything. You got to ask questions. Share your um, your goals and your values. A marriage relationship can be one of the most rewarding experiences two people can have this side on this side of heaven, or it can be one of the most difficult. Too many couples enter into a marriage relationship relying solely on the power of their feelings rather than establishing, establishing healthy relationship habits. But feelings can come and go. You don't love me today. And if that's all your marriage is built on, you're in trouble. I don't feel me. Not on feeling. You're in trouble. You are in trouble. And we don't want that. Mm, nobody wants to be in trouble, right? Nobody would like to get in trouble, right? Mm. Right? Mm. Okay. Genuine love is not <laughs> primarily a feeling, but it's costly a decision to sacrifice yourself for the good of another person. I'm going to read that again. Genuine love is not primarily a feeling but a costly decision to sacrifice yourself for the good of another person. Meaning you will accept them for who they are. And you let them to your side. Not sure. Not sure. To <laughs> get <laughs> him, he didn't have no stomach. Now he got a key. So. Love them for who they are, who that person is. By the same token, too many couples allow their relationship to drift into autopilot. We just gonna cruise with on out. You know, the white people say that we don't have to do that. But we gonna hang on in and tell for the children. Really? That's, that's autopilot. That's autopilot. Autopilot, okay? That is to say that they are not international about making their marriage a priority. Just let it go. Just let it go. Let it go. Apply. Instead, they allow the busyness of their lives, other demands, to push their relationship into the background, thinking that they have, they have time later to work it out. 
time waits on no one. The world revolves around time. So you put that autopilot, it ain't gonna stay winter forever. It ain't gonna stay summer forever. Time changes. Time changes things. And if you change things, things will be changed for the better and not for the worse. When things eventually slow down, they may discover that they have grown apart, operating more as roommates than a marriage partner. Mm -hmm. Operating as roommates, because you let it go into autopilot. Falling asleep behind the wheel. When you approach marriage, autopilot. You just let it go. Let it go for what it knows, not for what you know in your relationship and to be a good thing. Let me go. I want to touch on this and I think my time is up. Twelve ways to build a strong marriage in your relationship and keep that team powerful and strong and motivated. Always answer your phone. <laughs> There is no such thing as. See, I couldn't answer my phone. I wasn't by my phone. Now, trust me, this. This is the thing. This is the key. Get this now. Get this. Get this. There are times where we can't answer our phone because we're working. But if it's not a weird hours of time, come on. No, you got to answer your phone. I'm sorry. Now, you know that when I'm using myself, I work and I, we can't keep our phones on us. And you know, everybody keeps their phones on them, and I don't. Once I get to work, it's in my drawer. But in the windows of my hours of working, and if I can't answer my phone, my husband is understandable about that. And vice versa for me. The way he works is loud machines, so he might hear me when I call. But you also need to come up with a code for one another. If I call you, because it could be a dying mercy during the work hours. A uh, uh, wife could be hurt on a job or anything. I mean, somebody trying to get in touch with that, your house, his spouse phone is trying to call you. So, give yourself a window. Relationship.